As soon as he said, don't, don't turn them on, I said, I would have been like, don't turn what on? It's too late for something in this room. She would have been like, what you talking about? I'm talking about me! Me! Abstraction Games, welcome back <laughs> to my house. And I'm walking with my girlfriend, and I'm walking right down the street, finna get locked up in this school, and I won't get out till y'all all dead. I'm finna walk up in that. All I needed was one word to rhyme, bro. One word. What? Good, y'all. What about? Hey, check out my shirt. Monica, I love you. Thank you for the package. One second. <laughs> Sean, I love you. Thanks for the thanks for the package, bro. Sorry, bro. He gonna chill over here, bro. Now this one right here, yo, Jade Bryant, I love you. Thank you for this wonderful piece of artwork. I actually got a special video I recorded opening up this first reaction. Email me, I'ma send it to you. Look. What's going on everybody? I wanted to say big thank you to everybody who has sent me a gift or something in the P.O. box. I don't know, I don't even know the address of the P.O. box. PG had opened it up when we first moved here and I just, I don't know, for some reason I didn't really promote it or push it like that because I don't do it for the gifts, you know. I, I definitely do it just for the laughs, like making us all laugh. Like I'll be laughing in the videos, y'all be laughing at the videos. That's why I do this in the first place. But when I get messages and kind words and, and gifts like the shirt, the plush, the paintings, the letters that come with all this stuff, it truly makes my freaking life, bro. So thank you everybody who sent me something. I don't know the P.O. Box address though. I can't even sit here and be like, yo, send, send me some more stuff here. I don't, I don't have one yet. Or ask PG. Let's get into this dang and ropa though. I know I've been slacking for weeks. We about two weeks. Let's not even act like it's that big of a deal, but I know two weeks on YouTube feel like two eternities, huh? Now let me check, maybe I have like notes that tell me what those four locations were supposed to be. I don't think they have transcripts on this game. Alright, well... I know for sure it would have to be what? Oh, we just gotta leave anyway. The hospital... The... Electronics store? I'm gonna just go to every location. The motel, right? I know it's just investigation. Somebody already commented. They was like, Berlin gonna forget everything for this third trial if he keeps waiting. I just remembered. I never went inside any of the rooms in the motel. Plus, I don't even know where Hiyoko's room is. It might be faster to just ask someone. So you have appeared. You're here, right? Come on out! Huh? Are you, are you talking to me? I can see you. Did you really think you could hide your presence like that? Bro, I wasn't trying to hide in that. I'm right in front of you, bro. Yo, which room was Hiyoko staying in? Listen well. Open the door to the center room. <laughs> However, <laughs> are you prepared? Make sure you pray to whatever god you hold dear. And you might want to bring an extra pair of underwear. Why is my mic already like, whatever? <laughs> I wonder, how does this guy talk to his parents and teachers? Probably just like this, honestly. He probably is the parent and the teacher. Hey, Hajime, can you explain it to me again? What happened when you first discovered Ibuki's body? It was the same as when I found it with you guys. Ibuki's body was hanging from the baton lighting. However, 
There was no body discovery announcement made. That's why I went to go get you guys. I met up with Chiaki at this motel, and when we were about to go back to the music venue, the door was locked. You met up with Makan and me. And when we went back to the music venue, the entrance door wouldn't open for some reason. I see. Yo, Fortnite, watch out, bro. Move. Yeah, that's what happened. Hey. This is the most important part. When you arrived at the motel, who else saw you besides Chiaki? Um, as I recall... <gasps> Didn't you hear me? A body was found! <gasps> b, b b body yeah! Could it be? Do you intend to spread lies like Nagito in order to confuse us all? Besides Chiaki, I also saw Gundam and Monomi. I see. So Kazuchi and Sonya didn't appear, huh? I didn't think about it, but you got a point. Do you think those two are suspicious? Why do I do the ugliest shit when I'll come back to games? Like, relax, just play your game. You don't have to do ugly shit. Like... Well, Hyoko was killed. Between the time you saw Buki's body and when we broke down the door, right? So obviously those two are the most suspicious since they weren't with us. That might be it, but I... while we're at it, let me tell you my alibi too. When the morning Monokuma announcement woke me up, I went straight to the hospital. I saw Makan panicking in front of the hospital. I asked her what's going on, and she said Ibuki disappeared. So you guys all split up and looked for Ibuki, huh? Well, yeah. While we were circling the island, we came to the motel and saw you guys there. Did you see... Anyone else while you circled the island? Well... No. We went to the movie theater in that street full of machines to look for Ibuki. But we didn't see anyone. <laughs> Are you implying I don't have an alibi because I didn't run into anyone? It's unreasonable for you to doubt me. The time that Makan and I were on our own looking for Ibuki wasn't very long. In that short time, there's no way I could have killed Hiyoko and wrapped her around the pillar with duct tape. It's true. I feel like there wasn't enough time to do that after I left the music venue. But the fact that Hiyo the fact is Hiyoko was killed and we did discover her body. Huh? What? Do you still doubt me? Jeez. Well, I'm used to it. It's true, I've done things that I deserve to be doubted for. <laughs> so don't worry, even if you doubt me, I don't plan on dismembering you and encasing you in concrete. I don't want to know in advance what I'd have to do to end up like that. Golly, what kind of example was that? Fuyuhiko's account has been added to your tuple accession of your handbook. Alright. Let me in. Looks like it's locked, but... The key was inside her kimono. Maybe if I use this, and it's open. It opened, just as I thought this key was Hiyoko's room key. All right, I should go inside. So, Hiyoko was staying here. She only stayed here a few nights, so it doesn't really feel like her room, but I feel a little conflicted. Whoa! Oh my! Huh? Did the door open? Yeah, Hiyoko put the key in her kimono, so I used that to open it. Um... I see... What? Did something happen? No, it is just... I am starting to believe it might be my fault. Okay, well, now we're getting somewhere. Let me get out my pen and, and paper. <laughs> get, get your, uh... Your, your, uh, what do they call them? Their accounts? There you go. Her fall, what does she mean? Talk to her more, find out! Every time Monokuma shows up on these screens, I get a chill that makes my heart leap. Bro, talk to her. Um... The moment Hiyoko came to this motel, she completely shut herself in this room. She was afraid of the despair disease, so she was cautious of you guys too, right? However... 
her fear of the disease was not the only reason she locked herself in her room. She had another reason. She stung. We know what it is. Besides that disease, what other reason would make her lock herself in her room? Perhaps. Her kimono. Her... Her kimono? Um... Yesterday, I went to go talk to her. Since she had been in her room for some time, I told her it might be good for her to go outside for a bit. She kept the door to her room locked, but by coincidence, it was not locked at that time. And then, I saw it. Um... Bro, bro, should I be looking, bro? Put the thigh away, Spike! Why is her thigh out, bro? Who stands like that? Sad. Hiyoko was crying and struggling with her kimono sash. She did not want to smell bad, so she took a shower. But then she could not tie her sash anymore. Mahiro is no longer with us, so... I believe she was having trouble with it. She... Didn't leave her room because she couldn't tie her kimono, huh? Then who tied it perfectly when they hung her up on the pillar? Who knew how to do that? You are right. The others might have thought it was just a silly sash, but... It must have been a serious issue for her. Um... Hiyoko told me that she learned how to tie her sash from Mahiru. That Mahiru kindly taught her to the basics. That's why she wanted to be able to tie her sash on her own. Perhaps... She probably could not forgive herself for not being able to do it. Especially since Mahiru taught her. I... I... I could not really understand her feelings. Which is why I said what I did. What did you say? Hyoko, by chance, are you having trouble wearing your kimono? Stupid! What are you saying? Of course I can do it! Because Mahiru taught me. That's why I can do it on my own. Uh, um, if that is the case... How about you do it someplace where there is a mirror? Do you remember the full-length mirror in the storage room at the music venue? If you do it while standing in front of a large mirror, I am confident you will be successful. Also, shutting yourself in your room like this may be bad for your health. Um... And that was when she kicked me out. It cannot be. Could it be? Hiyoko remembered that? Are you saying she went to the music venue to wear her kimono? Hmm. I can see that happening. Hiyoko locked herself and made sure she put the room key inside her kimono. And I can't imagine that she was abducted by someone. If so, if so, that's weird. Hey, did you tell anyone about that before the incident? Or was someone listening in your, on your conversation? Um... I, I never told this to anyone! And I do not believe anyone was listening in on our conversation. Nobody knew. If that's the case, how did the killer know Hiyoko was going to the music venue? Sonya, never mind. Something's wrong. Alright, Kazuchi, you're looking kind of crazy right now, too, because you did create the... The teleprompter thing that we use to talk to each other. There's a mirror, but it's also small and rusty. There's no way anyone can use this. I don't see anything that looks suspicious. There's no sign that someone made a mess of a room, and I don't think she was forcibly abducted. I feel like I couldn't really find any important clue. Oh well. Alright, we out of here. I mean, it would be Sonya and him to be working together to begin with, like, who, who, else, who else would team up at this point? Gundam don't really have friends. Fuyahiko friend died. It's gotta be Soda. I'm sure we're gonna find out more here, though. Really? Alright, well, let's just start right to left.
really? I gotta sit here and... I'm not even gonna read this, y'all. I'm sorry. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Nothing there. Alright, left top corner. Maybe something here. Nope. Any Anything at the TVs? Nope. Anything right here at the, what is this? Cell phones? Of oh, secret videos? Nope. That's everything. I'm out of here. Alright. That location is clear. I think, what was it left? The hospital was one. We just left Hyoko room. Oh, the movie theater. That's right. We gotta, we gotta check out this movie right now. Nagi, what's good, my boy? Hello there. Why, hello there, Hajime. I knew you'd come here. That means you noticed it too, right? The case this time is an imitation case in which the killer used that movie as their theme. I wouldn't know, bro. I haven't watched it yet. I see. Then you should watch this movie first. Hey! Hey, manager! A customer's here! Did you call me? Yes! Did you call me? What? Huh? Hajime is the customer? D do you have a problem with that? What are you gonna do? <laughs> and you said you didn't want to watch it. But I knew you wanted to see it all along. If that's what Sundari Hajime looks like, then you're a really tough guy. What does that mean? <laughs> you were so devoted to being Sunder. You even bought the Monica Mystica for 1.5 million dollars! Relax, bro. Huh? You paid 1.5 million dollars for a sticker? It, 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 bro, it's nothing, bro. He's lying. In exchange for not watching this movie, Hajime paid 1.5 million dollars for a Monokuma sticker. Bro, look at the camera if you're gonna be up here talking, bro. Relax, bro. Since we're talking about it anyway, why don't you show it to Nagito? Relax. S -s 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 Stop it. But my resistance was in vain and Monokuma reached into my pocket and took the sticker. Ta-da! See? It's this one. I'm sorry, I was born stupid. That's... I'm gonna talk to you later, alright bro? It's kind of rough holding you. You sit right here for now on the desk. Get off my mouse, bro. You bought this for 1.5 million dollars? <laughs> but in the end, he's still gonna watch the movie! Who cares about that anymore? Just hurry up and give me an invitation ticket! Here! Okay, here you go! It already says so on the invitation ticket, but it's only effective today at this time. By the way, I can only give away one ticket per person. You only have one chance to watch it for free. I've already stamped today's date onto the ticket, so I, you won't be able to cheat. Don't worry, I only plan to watch this bull once. Look forward to it, okay? Then I'll go prepare the projection reel. Please wait a bit, okay? Hey. Uh, Hajime. About that invitation ticket. I strongly recommend you keep that safe. Huh? Why? No reason. Just... Think of it as a protective charm. I feel like I'm gonna need this for when somebody accuses me of something and I'm gonna be like, no, because I was here watching the movie during that. Or like, no, because I watched it after they were already killed. I guess I should just watch, wait until Monokuma finishes his preparations. And do what? Bro, my stomach hurts. That reminds me, that item should be on top of the counter. Oh, the bag. Yep. Y'all thought I wasn't gonna remember shit. This one looks like a tote bag made of hemp cloth with a decal of Mon Monomi's face on it. Ah, did that catch your eye? It's an all-purpose tote bag useful for variety of common. Why do I read it like that? I'm like, what are these words? It's a limited item. Only one person can have it. If the tote bag is gone, that means. What's this? Whoa there. Relax, stay on the desk, bro, chill. Were you interested in buying that tote bag? Too bad. Well, that's just too bad. It's already sold out. 
Yo, who'd you sell it to? You're so stupid. I tried it. <laughs> okay, Nagi, I see you. I see you with the reverse psychology. Ah! Ah! I remember you said there was only one because it's a limited item, right? Hmm. It's not limited to one. It's more like it's limited to one person. What's the difference? Hey, um... When you buy one bag, you get another one free. It's common practice to bait customers with bonus prizes. For some reason, hearing you say that pisses me off. Nice. Well now. Now then. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm not going to read everything because my stomach, like, I don't know, hurts out of nowhere. All right. Um, I apologize for keeping you waiting. World famous director Monokuma presents a stunning masterpiece that reduced American audiences to tears. The Wizard of Monami 2.5D. We'll be screaming shortly. Is that what this is considered 2.5D? That sounds so half assed. Now, Ben, please relax and enjoy the film. I'm gonna try. I hope they check out voice actors because I'm tired of reading right now. All right. Monokuma was born in a remote village full of old people because the death rates outpaced the birth rates. Nobody was smashing. Everybody was just growing old together. One day, Monokuma was swept up by a tornado created by a helicopter gunship during a routine military exercise. Okay. And was whisked away to Monami's country. Monokuma wanted to return to his homeland so he could go back to pestering the old people for change. Wow. So he began his journey to see the wizard, Monami, who was rumored to grant any wish one desires. Along the way, he met a very loyal group of friends. Monokuma met a Monami scarecrow who was missing a brain. When he recommended that she commit suicide, Golly! Golly! The Monami scarecrow hanged herself and died. Get this out of my face. He also met a Monami lion who was missing her courage. So he pumped her full of arrows. Why? What did that have to do with courage? What are you talking about? He also met a Monami tin man who was missing a heart. So Monokuma sliced her into lumps of iron. Get off my fucking desk, bro. After a lot of other stuff happened, Monokuma finally reached the wizard Monami, the great and powerful. Eventually, one thing led to another, and he started beating the crap out of Monami. And in the end, he somehow usurped the kingdom from her. With this, Monokuma enslaved the old people, took their pensions, and lived the rest of his days in luxury. And he lived happily ever after. The end. I'm about to, I'm over here really about to throw up. Y'all gotta give me a sec. I need some water or something. Man, movies are the best. That drama was so moving that I needed two boxes of tissues. <laughs> One for each hand. So, now then, let's meet again at the class trial. Bye-bye. Yeah, whose voice was that? Bye-bye. Like, get on the fucking mic like that, dude.
I'm too disgusted to even let out a sigh right now. That's all I can say to describe the situation. <laughs> now was it? And actually, I don't even have to ask. I totally expected your reaction. That was honestly the worst movie I've ever seen, bro. Is it even okay to call that a movie? Well... But thanks to that movie, now you know, right? Yeah. Just like he said, the characters who were killed in the movie matched the victims in this case. Ibuki's death by hanging matched the Scarecrow's death in the movie. Not just that, but Hyoko's suspended body matches the lion's death too. And what about the third one then? Whoa, what are we about to find out in this episode? It would have been a complete imitation if the killer killed three people. But it seems that wasn't possible. Well, we still don't know what happened to, uh... To, to Nekamaru, bro! <laughs> Perhaps the killer is upset about that right now. Or... I'm not sure if that's even true. We need to get to that hospital right now! Right now! Whoa! What about my dog though? Hold on. I didn't even check on her yet. Oh, she good. Hope is good. Uh, uh. Let's run there. Okay, we in the lobby. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. Well? I feel like I haven't been here in a while. Even though it's only really been a few days. Alright. Hey, you prepared that surveillance camera unit, right? Hey, hey! Yeah, so? I didn't make any weird modifications or anything. It's, it's not like I'm suspicious or anything. Didn't you get this from that shady looking alley where all those machines were lined up? Right. Y yeah, I just tweaked it a little. Then if there are other surveillance camera units, would it be possible to transmit a signal to the hospital from those cameras too? Man. No, that's impossible. Originally, surveillance cameras and surveillance monitors are only used as part of the same unit. The video that was filmed from the hospital camera can only be vi viewed on, on the hospital monitor! The video that was filmed with the music venue camera can only be seen on the music venue monitor. Hey. But if I left it like that, we wouldn't have been able to communicate, so I decided to swap the cameras. So that's how you guys were able to view the hospital for footage from the music venue and vice- Okay, come on, man. However, each surveillance camera unit manages its broadcast based on a specific number. So even if you bring the same model camera or monitor, you won't be able to interfere with the signal. So it's like a serial code. You can only, you know, serial codes communicate with serial codes. Meaning if another surveillance camera exists, it'd be impossible to broadcast with it. You know what they probably could have done though, while we were asleep? We could have easily just switched out both cameras and the monitors, which would mean, potentially, somebody was working from the hospital and somebody was working from the music venue. Together. But Soda and Nevermind was never... I don't know where they were this whole time. Huh? However, I didn't just swap the cameras. I modified them and increased the wireless range. And if I hadn't done that, we wouldn't have been able to use it. You're right. You did work on that. Relax, bro. Why are you so... Hajime. Hey, Hajime. There's something I want to ask you. You first discovered Ibuki's body at the music venue, right? But why did you go to the music venue? You had a reason for that, right? Did you see something with this camera that's right no oh, and i also wanted to ask you that it'd be different if the surveillance camera unit could record but it's only good for household functions hey hey tell me hajime yes that's that's exactly it i saw a strange video in the surveillance camera unit 
Oh gosh. I can't hear this music without thinking of Rico now. This dude, Rico, bro. Crusty. It showed the music venue stage. There was a black curtain hanging like there is now. But the whole display was pretty dark because they, they were using just candlelight. There was rope hanging from the ceiling. And beneath that, there was a stepladder on the floor. And right away, a person wearing a hospital gown and a hemp bag on their head appeared. I didn't know who it was because their face was covered, but now I know that must have been Ibuki. She walked straight to the stepladder and without any hesitation, she climbed that stepladder of her own free will. And then she grabbed that rope and that's all I saw. The candlelight being used must have been snuffed out or something because the screen went dark all of a sudden and it wasn't displaying anything anymore. Man. Well, if the candlelight goes out, obviously nothing will show up. Modern surveillance cameras have infrared functions so things can still show up even in the dark. But the one I got from the machine alley was a really old model. <gasps> uh, hold on. Well? At the time, you said you didn't know the person wearing the handbag was a bookie, right? Yeah. Hmm. Did you see those handprints on the window? Who's trying to climb up in here? You didn't know it was her, but you saw she was trying to hang herself. So you rushed over to the music venue to try and stop her. But I didn't make it in time. Hey. Still, if she climbed the stepladder on her own, does that mean she committed suicide? Wouldn't that mean she's her own killer? Ibuki, you could have told Ibuki to do anything and she would have done it, bro. What do you think, Chiaki? Look at them handprints. Is that a clue? Mm. There's no doubt Ibuki climbed the stepladder on her own, right? Yeah, there's no doubt. If so... Mm. Mm. Hey, don't think for so long. If you don't know, just be honest about it. Well, of course she doesn't. There's no way we'd be able to figure that out so easily. Mm. <gasps> oh yeah, I need to investigate the conference room on the second floor. Mm. I'm heading over there. <laughs> what the heck? She ran away all of a sudden. She said the conference room. But why would she mention the conference room all of a sudden? Also, I might just be overthinking it, but... Did she seem a, a little upset? Okay. Move, Soda. Can we check on, uh... Oh, wow. Now then. Phew. I'm finally getting back to my old self. Right. Hajime, help me out with my recovery. You can touch my boobs if you win. No thanks! She was bearable when she was quiet. It'd be so much better if she was still feeling the after effects. She'd beat me up if I said that out loud though. Anyway, why are you here? Hey, hey! Well, I've never been sick or hurt before, so I had no idea, but... <laughs> hospital gowns are pretty comfy. <laughs> I was thinking I might as well keep wearing one. Don't tell me you plan to wear hospital gowns from now on. That's the idea, but it looks like they're out of stock. It looked like there was one gown for each patient's room, so I thought there'd be more in the empty rooms. There weren't any gowns? Yo. Yep, that's right. Ibuki died wearing one, so the only one left is the one Nagito was wearing. <laughs> if, I have no one, if I have no choice, then I should just use Nagito's. It's a unisex size, so I'll probably be able to fit in it. Wait, hold on, what happened to the gown you were wearing? Huh? Are you saying I should wear the one I already wore? That's gross! Wearing clothes someone else was wearing is even grosser. Like? No time to dilly-dally. I totally left Makan back at the music venue. Crap, I gotta go back soon. Well, I mean, it's okay since I already investigated the music venue, but leaving her on guard duty was a bad idea. 
I have no need to go in here. Where is my ne uh, Nekamaru at? Bro. We just don't give a F or what? Is he in here? The conference room, staff room. I'm going here first. I'm only going to do what they're telling me to do right now. This ain't, this ain't, uh, Man and Madame where there's secret little clues all over the freaking, you know what I'm saying. What's this? It's pitch black. I can't see anything. Um, where's the switch? Hey. Don't turn it on. Whoa! Huh? Ch 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 Chiaki, are you there? Cause... If you turn on the light, it's gonna be fully exposed. It'd be embarrassing. Whoa! What? What's fully exposed? Hey. hey, Hajime. If you poke out your eyes, you can turn on the light. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna poke them out? What the f? I'm not gonna poke out my eyes. Aww. Bummer. Troll fail. No sooner did she finish saying that, I heard the dry sound of curtains being drawn. There was a flash of intense light that stung my eyes a little. I squinted my eyes until they started adjusting to the light. And I saw Chiaki had finished opening the curtain that was covering the window. Haji, you should have played your cards way better than that. You should have played your cards way better than that. As soon as she said, don't, don't turn them on, I said, I would have been like, don't turn what on? It's too late for something in this room. She would have been like, what you talking about? I'm talking about me! Me! Hey, hey. Were you surprised? A uh, little. Surprised? I don't get it. Well? I got it. Got what? See? The curtains in this conference room are designed to completely block out light. They filmed the video in here. That black curtain is the same black curtain from in the fucking music venue. Mm. There's a projector in here, so they were probably careful about light light shining through. See? A black curtain that blocks light and it's also long enough to reach the floor. It's perfect. That's why it was so dark. So, Haji, come on, is something wrong with it? Mm. She stayed quiet like this dude really don't don't get it. I'm still in the middle of investigating, so it's a secret. Yeah, she's upset. But still, what was all that about? That bit about it being embarrassing if I look and troll fail? Nope. I just wanted to mess with you. Yeah, she's definitely upset. Why is she acting so childish? I guess I'm done investigating the hospital. I should move on to a different place. It's me, Monokuma! Yay! Awesome! What do you want? The class trial's gonna start, you know! How is it gonna start already? I'm not done investigating yet. So, make sure you guys come to Monokuma Rock ASAP! Bro, I... <laughs> I'll see you soon! Bro! It's... already time? So, this again. I need to go to that place again. But now's not the time to be a, a coward. The reason Ibuki and Hiyoko became victims? In order to find the truth. Only thing I can do is go. What? Bro. I don't even know where that place is off the top of my head like that, bro. Oh, I'm just hoping I run to it, bro. Have we even learned enough information for us to sit up here and try to have a trial? Who is the prime suspects right now? If they filmed that initial... Yeah, it had to be. Which would mean somebody that was in the hospital convinced her to do that. Because I'm sitting here thinking, how would we have so many people guarding the front of the hospital? Yet, Ibuki makes her way out and then goes to a, goes to a planned 
location of the music venue where they tell her to hang herself and film it on camera. No, that was upstairs. Which means she probably didn't even hang herself there. Who would have taken the body to the freaking music venue from the hospital? Everyone who heard the announcement had gathered in front of Monokuma Rock. And soon enough... Welcome! Is everybody here? Do you guys want to go to the class trial? Wait! Hey, jerk! Hold it right there! Monony's such a dumb child. My brain works just fine. Hey, hey. Monokuma, what did you do with Nekomaru? Thank you. Hmm. I see. So you've come to avenge him. That's... That sounds like he died. <laughs> sounds like you say. Oops. Anyway. Since Nekomaru is unfortunately unavailable today, let's just say he's absent. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Now then, I gotta go first. I won't let you. Get his ass, Monami, get his ass. Hey. Did you hear what he just said? Huh? Don't worry about it. There's no way Nekomaru is dead. He's just trying to piss us off. D damn it! Of, of course he's not dead. There's no way, not in a million years. Well... More importantly, it's best if we worry about ourselves for now. If something happens here, every one of us except Nakamura will die. <laughs> Why are you so excited about that? How about it? Who knows? Maybe I'm just looking forward to seeing poetic justice prevail. What do you yearn? What are you saying, fiend? <laughs> You'll find out soon enough. See? Then let's go. I'm gonna do it! All right, let's hurry up and get this over with. Yeah, you're right. We stepped onto the escalator and ascended towards the gaping mall of Monokuma Rock. And that's when I suddenly noticed it. I noticed our lined up silhouettes kept getting smaller and smaller but I can't turn back now if I turn back I won't be able to press forward and when everyone was inside Monokuma Rock brain damage the elevator began its deep descent as usual but nobody said a word as we stood there trying to figure out what to say to each other, the elevator descended deeper and deeper. And when it descended as far as it could go, it finally stopped. The elevator door opened slowly, almost tantalizingly so. Light poured through from the other side, eroding the boundaries of the darkness. And I walked into that place. My, my! It feels pretty toothless with all these empty seats. <laughs> well, two people got killed at the same time, and, and Nekomaru's not here either. Hey, hey! Is Nekomaru really not participating? If he's alive, you should invite him! No, no! Why bother? What? Well now. Now then, let's begin. Yahoo! It's the beginning of the long-awaited class trial. Please enjoy it to your heart's content. And so, the curtain to the third class trial was about to open. Ibuki Miyota, the ultimate musician. She was really loud, but she was the mood maker of our group. When I was with her, all of my pain and suffering just seemed to melt away. Hiyoko Sa Sayonji, the ultimate traditional dancer. Just from looking at her adorable face, you'd never know she was actually selfish and foul-mouthed. She was trying to change herself, and she was desperately trying to come to terms with my hero's death. You know, we never saw her do not one traditional dance. Kill her off. 
The person who killed those two is among us. I definitely can't believe it. But whether I believe it or not is irrelevant. Unless I figure out the truth, I won't be able to escape from this hell. That's why I must find out, no matter what the cost, for our sake, for our friend's sake, for Ibuki and Hyoko's sake. And so, the curtain to the third class trial was about to open. This life-threatening trial, billowing with hope and despair, has begun. <laughs> Alright you guys, the next time you will see me playing Daniel will be the first half of the class trial. You know these trials are broken up into two parts now. First trial, first part, second part, then we're going right back to finding out what we're doing here on the island. This investigation seemed pretty short though. Uh, this should be a pretty quick case, I'm imagining. I don't, I don't see... I'm interested to see how things come together. There really wasn't that much information to go off of though, so yeah. When we return, we will finish out the class trial and I'll see y'all there. If you enjoyed this series, want to see it continue, make sure you slap a like, beat that like button's ass. Subscribe if you are new, turn on the bell so you know I'm posting videos. Love each and every one of you and I'll see you in the next video. Peace!